Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be talking about market efficiency. So basically, where do we maximize our efficiency? Um, who's involved? So we'll look at consumers, we'll look at producers, and we'll see what happens when we impose a tax. So we'll have some form of, form of uh, negative effect because of taxes. So when you have government intervention, there is a negative effect, but we'll talk about why it's justified. So the first thing we're going to go over is our model. So we have price, quantity, we have demand, and we have supply. The most efficient point on this curve on this graph is where both curves intersect. We call this equilibrium. So from here, you should be able to understand what the equilibrium price and quantity is. It's just the price and quantity corresponding with this point. So our equilibrium price is 10, equilibrium quantity is 10. So something we look at when we look at um, efficiency is total surplus. How much surplus is, um, how much surplus is created at selling and producing at this quantity and price? So we're going to see how it impacts the consumer and how it impacts the producer. So before we get to that, when we look at our demand curve, we, see, we think of willingness to pay. So each point on this curve is a different individual's willingness to pay in this market. So if the price is $10, how much would you be willing to pay um, for this product? So let's just say you go into, let's say you're bu uh, buying a six pack of soda and you see that it's $10. Now, you coming into the store, you're thinking, okay, I have $20, so I have $20. That's how much you're willing to spend on a six-pack of soda. So I'm going to do WTP. This is willingness to pay or purchase. So you're willing to spend $20, but you go to the store, and the six-pack is $10. Now, in this case, would you purchase the product, yes or no? For the most part, everyone will say yes, because you're originally willing to spend $20, and you're getting it for 10. So you would purchase this product. So what's the difference between the $20 that you would want to spend and the $10 you're actually getting? Whatever is left over, so 20 minus 10 is 10. We call this our CS. This is consumer surplus. This is the benefit that you have left over after you purchase your product. Another example would be, let's just say, you're going to a music festival. Let's say Coachella. Um, if you're willing to spend Let's say you're willing to spend $600. That's how much you're willing to put away um, to buy tickets to this three-day um, festival. Um, now let's say the um, Coachella, they sell these tickets for $400. Would you be pretty happy if you are willing to pay $600 and you get these tickets for $400? Yes, you would be happy because you have something left over. You were willing to spend $600 because your favorite artist was gonna be there and you think that they should be valued at $600. But you got it for 400 and you have $200 left over. What else could you do with those $200? There's a lot of things you could do. You could spend um, uh, more money on, let's just say your Airbnb, your campsite, food, supplies, whatever it may be. You have more left over to do something else with that money. So again, consumer surplus is whatever you have left over. So it's your willingness to pay minus your price that's your consumer surplus. That's what you have left over. Now, each individual on this curve is willing to pay a different amount. Now, let's say you go into the store and you're only willing to spend $5 on um, a six-pack of soda. So now we're saying, now we're saying you're only willing to pay $5. And the price is 10. Are you going to purchase a six-pack of soda? No, you're not, because you're only willing to pay $5. You value it at $5, but the actual price is 10. So if you were to pay for this, five minus 10, this would be a negative value. Now, consumer surplus is never going to be negative. You don't want it to be, because you want to partake in this transaction. So this would be negative five. So you only purchase a product if your willingness to purchase is greater than or equal to the price. So if it was $10, you would purchase it because you're willing to pay 10 and the price is 10. Win-win. There's nothing left over. You're still in the clear. Now, if your uh, willingness to pay is less than the price that's set, you're not going to carry out the transaction. You don't value it enough. You're just going to go do something else. Okay, so that's how we look at consumer surplus. Now, the way we look at it or the way we calculate it is you go from your equilibrium point. Consumer surplus is the area beneath the demand curve. So the area beneath the demand curve above the equilibrium price. So the equilibrium price is right here. 
So the area that we're going to shade in is this upward triangle right here. This is your consumer surplus. So again, I'll say it again. It's the area beneath the demand curve. So beneath the demand curve, above the equilibrium price. So this triangle right here that I've shaded in right here, this is your consumer surplus. Now, when we did our example over here, this was just individuals. So this is just for one individual. This is the sum of all individuals that are willing to purchase this product when the price is at $10. So if I were to ask you to calculate this, you should be able to. This is the area of a triangle. That's how you calculate consumer surplus. It's base times height divided by two. So base times height divided by two. So you just plug in your numbers. So the height is 10, the base is 10, 10 times 10 is 100, 100 divided by two is 50. So consumer surplus is 50. So now we're gonna talk about the seller. So when we look at the seller, again, remember that we're just looking at numbers here. We're just finding the area of this triangle. You're given all the numbers that you need. Now we're looking at the seller. So now we're gonna look at the willingness to accept or the willingness to sell, basically. So now we're looking at the supply curve. At each one of these, um, at each one of these price points, different individuals are willing to sell. Now, what, what would make someone want to sell at $10? Now think about this, they only want to sell if they make a profit. We're assuming people are rational. And same goes for our other example as well. You're rational, so you'll purchase the product if it's worth your um, willingness to purchase. Now the only way you would be willing to accept or sell your product is if the price is above your cost. So we're going to assume your willingness to accept is your cost. Alright, so when we talk about willingness to accept, this is the same thing as your cost. We're going to treat it the same way, your willingness to accept or willingness to sell. So if your willingness to accept is $5, so your cost of producing this is $5. If your price, let's just say price, here we'll go back one, if price is greater than your cost, you sell. If price is less than cost, you don't sell. So again, it's looking at cost and it's looking at profits. So if our price is $10, so from here, if our price, our market equilibrium price is $10 and our cost to produce equals $5, 10 minus five, so your producer surplus is your, your price minus your willingness to accept Whatever you have left over is your producer surplus, and we'll treat this like profit. So 10 minus five is five. It's a positive value. That is good. You can use this for something else. You, you have profit now. You can pump it back into your uh, market um, or your industry, whatever it may be. You can use this for a, um, a positive thing, so to speak. So in this case, these are your, um, your guidelines for looking at willingness to accept and your producer surplus. So producer surplus is the price minus your willingness to accept or your cost. So if you have positive value, you sell. Let's say our price is 10 and our cost is $11. So if our price is 10 and the cost is $11, will you sell? No, you will not. 11 is greater than 10. Your cost is much higher than the price that the market is accepting. So the price is 10. If our cost was $11, it cost us $11 to produce X amount you're not going to make any profit. You'd be losing money. This is why you would not sell. So you're only going to sell if the price is greater than your cost. So in this case, the, the way we calculate producer surplus, it's the area above the supply curve beneath the equilibrium price. So this red triangle right here, this is your producer surplus. Now, if we were to do this math here, again, we have all the numbers that we need. Again, the formula for a triangle to find the area is base times height divided by two. So it's gonna be, this is 10, this is 10. So 10 times 10 divided by two equals 50. 
So consumer surplus equals 50, producer surplus equals 50. So our total surplus in this case, so anytime you're given total surplus, total surplus is consumer surplus plus producer surplus. So 50 plus 50 equals 100. That's gonna be our total um, surplus created when we sell at 10 for the price and we produce 10 units. So again, total surplus is an important thing in economics. You always wanna maximize total surplus. No economist will ever say we wanna maximize consumer surplus or producer surplus. We wanna maximize overall surplus. That's the main goal here. We always wanna maximize total surplus. So again, this video is looking at uh, market efficiency and we'll see what happens when we include um, our willingness to pay and our willingness to accept. So the next thing I want to show you guys is the, um, the effect of taxes. Alright, so now we're going to talk about taxes and what it creates. So anytime we impose a tax, we always say it's beneficial because we're going to assume the government's using this money and pumping it back into our economy. So we're assuming they're rational, um, they use the funds for good. Um, so again, we have equilibrium. We always maximize our total surplus our total surplus at equilibrium. So from here, you should be able to already visualize what our um, consumer and producer surplus are. So here's the equilibrium point. If you can visualize it, this top triangle, consumer surplus, bottom triangle is always producer surplus. Now the big issue we see here is let's say we impose a tax on the seller. So now um, the seller has to pay a certain amount of tax. So this tax is always gonna be divided up between buyer and seller. So if we impose a tax on the seller, it's very similar to increasing their cost of production. Now it costs them more to produce, so the response will be producing less. So we have a new supply curve. Now with this, we also have a new equilibrium point. So now we see that the price has increased and quantity has decreased. Now we're going to see what happens to consumer and producer surplus? So if you were originally able to see the curve, so this top portion right here, this was our original consumer surplus. Now, our new consumer surplus is this triangle right here. So anytime you have a tax, so I use black for this so it shows up better. So anytime there's a tax, consumer surplus decreases. Again, you're comparing this small triangle to this larger triangle that we originally had. So it's your old equilibrium and your new equilibrium. So consumer surplus has decreased. Now from here, if we want to see how much the producer has um, decreased, this is the quantity they're going to produce at now. And this price right now, this is the willingness to, they, this is the amount that they're willing to accept. Because again, they have to pay a certain portion to the government as well. So now, this bottom triangle right here, this is your new producer surplus. Now originally, it was this larger triangle going from our original equilibrium, as you'll see. So you'll see that our producer surplus decreases as well. Now what we're left with is this middle portion right here. So we have two rectangles and two triangles. So anytime you impose a tax, it's going to um, generate some form of revenue. We use this revenue and we pump it back into the economy. So in this case, this middle purple rectangle, so both these rectangles, this is your tax revenue. Your tax revenue is just the amount of the tax multiplied by the quantity that you produce. So it's going to be this quantity multiplied by the difference right here, which will be your tax. I have a video posted on how to carry out these um, calculations. Um, and then so this right here, this purple, is government revenue. This is the amount generated because of this tax. Our green is our consumer surplus, red is our producer surplus. Now these other two triangles, I'm running out of colors. This portion right here, we call this DWL, or deadweight loss. This is something that nobody gets, not the government, not the consumer, not the producer. So this is the reason why taxes are inefficient to an extent. They're inefficient because they create deadweight loss. No one can capture this portion. 
Now the goal for any government is to reduce their um, deadweight loss when they impose a tax. They don't want this portion to be lost, so they try to impose it the most efficient way possible. But the way we justify this is government revenue is used for good. DWL is deadweight loss. Okay, so now when we look at our calculations, originally when there's no tax, if there's no tax, total surplus with no tax, NT is no tax, it's consumer surplus plus producer surplus. Now total surplus with a tax, so TS um, with a T. Now we count our consumer surplus, so it's this area right here. This is our new total surplus. We take in government revenue because it does benefit society. It does help us. It pays for roads, education, healthcare, whatever it may be. So now consumer surplus plus producer surplus plus government revenue. That's the key difference here. So always remember that you always take into account government revenue, but when you do impose a tax, the negative is you have a deadweight loss. When there's no tax, there is no deadweight loss. We don't have this unfulfilled area. So again, just make sure you know that. I also have a video posted on this, um, looking at market efficiencies and taxes. So if you have questions, leave them in the um, comment section. Other than that, I will see you guys next time. Thank you.